Hey guys, in this video we're going to do some editing in Capture One. So I'm Daniel Norton, photographer here in New York. I make videos like this one, which is on post-production. I also make them on gear, on philosophy, uh, and other things photo-related. If that's interesting to you, go ahead and subscribe. So if you don't know, uh, every Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern on Twitch, uh, I get on and we look at the previous week's, usually, uh, photo shoot, and we kind of go through and edit. I go through my process of kind of how I do my final tweaks, how I decide which images I like. I discuss kind of what happened during the shoot and what led me to certain decisions. So you get a little bit of insight there. Um, if you're interested in that, go on to my Twitch channel. I'll put a link in the description and you guys can uh, can go ahead and follow me there. Uh, in addition, I'll put up in the little uh, note up here, I'll put the link to this, this particular session because this was a live stream. So if you want to watch the actual photo shoot too, uh, you can go ahead and do that. That was on Adorama. So anyways, let's get to it. Th this particular um, shoot that we're going to work on is a hard light, soft light shoot. That I, I kind of did. I, I feel like whenever I do these, we always just kind of touch the tip of it. Um, some of the stuff, I mean, hard light can be really great because uh, it can just, it brings out texture, but it also uh, helps amplify color and brings out saturation. Um, so it's something that I use quite a bit, actually, um, you know, in my in my non kind of middle of the road video for Adorama work. So let's go, let's go here. Uh, all right, so... Essentially, because I just did the shoot, it's on my desktop. Uh, we've talked about this before. When I when I shoot, uh, you know, when I do a photo shoot, I'm shooting tethered to the computer in Capture One. I te I drop it on my desktop, and then before I like leave the studio, just so I have a backup, I copy it onto a small hard drive, and then ultimately it ends up on my Drobo, which is like a, a RAID system. Uh, I left it on my on my la on my desktop because. For people who follow me on other things, you probably know, uh, I had lost power, you know, power went out because it was a massive storm on the East Coast. And uh, yeah, I didn't, uh, didn't, I just literally got power yesterday and didn't sit down to do it. So it's still sitting on my desktop and uh, that makes it easy for me. So I'm going to open this up um, and we can see. So what I would normally do is if I'm working on a project, so like this is the project, I would have it over here. Um, everything I'm working on, I usually keep over here as a shortcut. You know, if you have a Mac, uh, you just basically drop it over there. I'm sure Windows has a similar thing. And essentially, I would just come to it. And, you know, Capture One creates all these folders when you when you start. Uh, this is the main file. And then you've got, all, of course, all your images go in here. And then if you use, out, if you do any output, you know, if you want to drop it in output, that is. And then you've got your selects folder, which I almost never use in the trash. Um, someday we will talk about the selects folder again. Oh, this should be interesting, actually, too, because I shot with the Z7. Um that uh, Seth was borrowing from Nikon. And I did have some weirdness with the TTL. It seemed like it wasn't as accurate as uh, it had my Z6, and I'm thinking it could be uh, firmware. Whenever you get a new camera, like you're borrowing one from somebody or you buy a camera, you should always update everything, because who knows, you know, with the firmware is matched up. So we're probably gonna have to do some tweaking just to balance out our exposures in these. Um, but anyways, let's go for it. So opening up our project. And here it is. Hey, J Bits. Okay. So, um, I'm in Capture One. You know, I made a screenshot so I could put it on social so you guys could see it. So right now I just have a bunch of stuff selected. I'm going to go up to the top here. And um, I'm going to select everything. So the way that we do that is I hold down uh, the Command key and I hit A. And that's going to select everything, like like in most programs. Uh, let me make this full screen here. I feel like I'm going to sneeze, guys. I was rearranging. I don't know if you noticed. I mean, you can't see me now, I guess, because, uh, I mean, you guys you can see me small in the corner, but you see I have new lights back there. I got some new LED lights. They were super cheap. So uh, when I get it all worked out, I'll do a little video and talk about it. Uh, but uh, if you care. But uh, they're just like some cheap, uh, like, uh, outside lights actually and then I quickly uh, <laughs> I quickly grabbed a couple of extra pieces of 2 by 4 that I had in my shed and like screwed them together to build like a little rack back there uh, to keep them up off the ground um, love the big lights cool um, alright so let's do this so I've selected everything it's three stars right uh, is what I'm going to make everything so I'm going to hit three and that's going to mark everything at three stars so the reason I do that, I repeat myself every time because we never know if there's new people. 
um, is that the way that I prefer to edit, and I think is the best way to edit, if you don't edit like this, then I suggest you try it, um, is instead of looking for the images that you like, instead remove the images that you don't like um, or don't love, as the case may be, right? We're not actually deleting them. What we're doing is we are just, you know, changing the rating to less than three stars so we don't see them anymore. So we don't delete anything because who knows, maybe later on you'll come back and like something. But the idea here is we're just getting rid of it. So we're not looking at it, right? So we're only looking at stuff that we think are acceptable if they're out of focus, if we just don't like the composition, if the, the exposure's off too much that so we don't want to try to tweak it, we just get rid of it. So then what we end up with is a small batch of images that are easier to look through. I think this is easier for me. I mean, I know it's easier for me, but I also think it's easier when you're doing this with a client as well. Uh, it's actually what I do when I sit down with somebody and we're doing a shoot and I am allowing them, if we're doing it on the spot, uh, I will have them go through and I'll do the same thing. I'll mark them all three stars and I'll say, anything you don't like, press two. And then I usually say, if you really love something, press four. And I do that just so that then I'll do a quick sort after to see kind of what they really liked. But, uh, you know, I don't, usually it depends on the person. A lot of times I will get them started and then I'll like walk away because I feel like if you're standing there, they, they I don't know, like they, they, they act differently. So it's good to just let somebody be in it um, and kind of, that's a whole other video, I guess. Let's do this. All right, so. If what we're going to do so that this works for us is 170 images here, I'm going to hit the little uh, search doobie over here and I'm going to make my search three stars or higher. So what this means is what I just said, everything that is three stars or higher will be seen in my search. Um, okay, so if I hit a two, that one goes away because clearly I don't want that one. That was just a test of the wall. I didn't even have the paper down. I don't know what I was doing there. Um, I was just probably testing to make sure that the thing synced. Synced? Was it in sync? Worked? Tethered? Whatever. I was just testing the equipment. Uh, yeah. I think it's definitely a good way to, to go. Um, you know what the problem with this is? I'm not going to mute myself very easily. And I may sneeze. So if I sneeze, guys, I apologize. Uh, hold on one second. I'm going to sneeze. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I had to load. I was down on the ground behind my... Apparently, behind my little couch back here is very dusty. Um, <laughs> headphones alert. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, yeah, you know what's interesting is so I have this set up to mute myself here, but it mutes me in, in OBS. And right now I'm in, I'll have to figure this out. But if this works with no glitches, because, you know, I've been having glitches, I'm probably going to use this link. So we will work that part out. Um, anyways, so clearly this is not a good image. Uh, so we'll get rid of this one. All right, so now we're kind of coming into images that we might want to keep, so we'll start looking at them. Um, let's see, I did a reflection here. I got a shiny screen. I don't know why Apple was obsessed with shiny screens for a long time. I mean, it does look good, but man, there's a window behind me and it is not ideal. Uh, I need to get a matte screen next time I upgrade my screen. Don't hear or see a thing. Okay, good. All right. Uh, cool. All right. This looks okay. I'm going to punch in here. So she's in white, which, of course, is always tricky, right? Because if you've been watching these, what I generally end up doing is these are a week old already. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, because she's in white, and, you know, what I normally do, uh, kind of my normal process is I usually end up bringing my whites up a bit. We're going to have to be careful here, so, um, but I'll zoom it into her face, and we'll see that it is, in fact, out of focus, it looks like, so we'll get rid of that one. That was an easy decision. Here we go. Now we're sharp. All right, so what we're going to do is, looking at this, because I mostly care about her face, I'm going to grab my levels, and I'm going to grab the, the, the brights, and I'm going to bring it in. And again, what we're doing here is we're building contrast. That will automatically move the neutral, which, you know, or the middles, midtones, I guess. Um, I usually kind of tweak those a little bit from where they are. I don't just let it balance out. And then the last thing I want to do, because if you just do that, everything starts to look really flat. So what you want to do whenever you do that is to make sure you grab your darks and bring them in as well. And that'll give you that kind of, uh, you know, nice contrast across the image. So, you know, we went from, okay, actually... Let's see, I'll do this. I'm just copying my settings so I don't have to do it again. Oh, no, don't do it. 
uh, and then I'm just going to take it off. You know, so, you know, when it comes out, it's properly exposed and everything. It's just that I want it to have a little more punch, right? We're going to add that extra punch uh, just by tweaking our levels. Boop. So I'm going to put those settings back on by pasting them. That looks pretty good. I want to make sure that in my whites, I still have detail, which I do. Again, this is the Z7, so this is a big files. Look at that. Look, look, typical model, right? Look at that, Serena. Why do you get your phone in your hand? What's going on? <laughs> no, these are just test sheets. A little test. Um, what mic am I using? This is the... Uh, uh, Audio Technica 2020, I believe it's called. And it's like... Uh, just out of arm's reach on me. Why is the sound? How is the sound, guys? Because, again, I'm going through the Sling Studio, so it might sound a little different. Uh, let's see. Uh... Hold on, Lightroom does have that. See, in Lightroom, maybe I'll go into Lightroom. Well, I have not used Lightroom in forever, so we won't open that can of worms. Lightroom has kind of a really interesting way to do it. But I'll have to kind of come in and, and, and show you how I do it in Lightroom. It's kind of the same. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but there's a way to do a similar process. Um, oh, audio is in sync. You can hear the fan. Oh, yeah, well, I can't do anything about that. Oh, I'm surprised you can hear the fan. Maybe I'll turn it, maybe I'll turn it down a little bit. Let me just go down a little bit on the volume. I mean, that should get rid of the noise floor right there. What's cool is that OBS actually has a... Um, uh, audio, like a, it cleans it up. I'm trying to think what they call it now, espresso. So when I just when I'm just running OBS, I actually run that so you don't hear the the computer fans and stuff. Why don't I see my video now? Uh oh. Sound reflection in the room. Yeah, it, it's a it's a it gives me space. I don't like using a lav. I don't know. Not for this. You wouldn't get that as much as that. Also, I'm, you know, two feet away from a giant piece of glass. It was literally a giant piece of glass right here. So, oh crap. Slightly out of sync. Yeah, that's so weird. I wonder why that is. Well, whatever. We'll figure it out. If it's okay, then it's okay. If it's crazy, then I'll... What I might have to try to figure out how to do is push OBS, the, OB, the OBS sound into the sling, which I have not done. Actually, you know what it is. I actually know what it is. It's because I'm going from the Zoom recorder to the... Oh, this could really screw things up, guys. But you know I gotta do it. You know I gotta do it. Give me one second. It might be loud for one second. Okay, I should be back. <laughs> yep, I'm definitely back. I can see it now. Sorry about that. <laughs> I wasn't thinking. I should not have done that because I went... I thought I could go headphones out from my Nikon, but of course that's not going to work because...
headphones and line signal are completely different. So audio 101 here. All right, we're back. I switched it up a little bit. Let's see if that makes a difference. Ooh. I can't see myself anymore. Okay, we're back. All right, let me know if this is better, guys. Um, if it's better in sync anyways, I, I went, instead of pushing it into OBS as well, I'm only going straight from the... All right, anyways, let me know, guys. Okay, so here we are. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. So once I see something that I like, uh, you know, as far as I make uh, adjustments, I'm going to hold down the shift, press command and C. That's going to copy all my adjustments. And then I'm going to go down to my next image and I'm just going to apply them. Uh, even if I do a, a slight lighting change, I'll always do this just to give myself a baseline. Uh, white points and black points. Are you talking about like being blown out? Because if that's the case, that's what this does. Uh, so right here, this is showing it that it's that you know according to it, it's actually too bright. But when I look, I can actually there's detail there. there there's enough detail there to make it feel correct. So I'm not that worried about that. But yeah, that that's what this does. Boop. And it'll go like bluish if they're if they're black black. So if that's what you're talking about by points. Okay. Cool. These are my cheap LED lights, Seth. They're they're super cheap. I will send you a link. Link in the description. All right. So, you know, we did these two shots just to make sure everything was in sync. And then we're actually starting. So uh, let's get rid of these. These are just black frames. All right. So here we are. Again, I didn't really change the light. So I'm just going to reply the same settings. Simple as that. I actually kind of like how this one's moody. I love a lot of shadow, so I'm down with this kind of thing. Uh, if you are not, then stand by. We're going to get to more overly lit shots in a second, or more lit shots in a second. Um, just because, I'm going to grab my mids. I just want to see what happens if I bring them up a smidge. You know, and remember that she has a warm skin tone. Uh, not only does she naturally have a warm skin, it's also the summer and she's been outside. So she's, you know, her skin tone is very warm. So we want to make sure we're not losing that by, by overexposing her. Um, but at the same time, I like to have my contrast. So I'm just tweaking these ever so slightly. And then I'm going to come in close to her face to make sure it looks good there. And it does. And you can see, right, I have that alert on. So, oh no, there's no detail in the highlight of her earring. Like that. See, I'm not worried about that. If I had that on her face, I'd be concerned. But, the, you know, that's why I usually don't leave it on unless I know I'm in a situation where it might be risky. And this wasn't risky. This is no risk situation here. Um, you know, shift command C copies these adjustments because I made a change. We'll go to the next one. Looks good. Simple as that. Just post your affiliate link. He doesn't know what the light is, of course. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I for this stuff, for this kind of stuff, I feel like the the oh. Then this happens to me every time I struggle my notifications. Um, it's nice to have big files, but I just feel like it's kind of a waste. So, to me, I wouldn't. Uh, trade the Z6 for a Z7, but the files are nice. I mean, they look like the Z6 files, just bigger. I know they're supposed to be something special, like different, but they, they don't seem any different to me, um, except for the fact that they're larger, which is kind of nice. But again, I, for what I'm doing currently in my life, it's not really a thing. You know, I'm not really worried about it. So Z6 for a Z7, I'm happy with the Z6 for me. But if you want those megapixels... Okay, so we obviously made some kind of a change here. Um, and I applied the same settings. The whole thing's still too dark. I think I actually probably dropped my exposure. Like I said, the, I'm wondering about the um, the firmware because I felt like the TTL was not as accurate in the Z7 as it was is in the Z6. And I don't know if that's just, you know, this situation and my version of it. Uh, it very well could be. Oh, thank you. Yeah, she's great. Well, thank you. 
Oh, thanks, Sharina. Of course you think you're cool. <laughs> Newbie question. Am I editing in the dark? You know, this is interesting that you would say that. I actually oftentimes do edit when it's in the dark. Like, I usually turn on the lights off. However, I am lit because we're doing a Twitch stream. So, it, it yeah, it's light in here. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, I don't black out my windows when I edit, but I do generally edit when it's darker because um, I just think that your eyes adjust better for the screen, um, personally. So, yeah, I, I would generally edit it in the dark if I can, but right, that's also, I have a grid on this, so... You know, the, let me know. I'll show you. I'll show you how dark it is. Boop. Yeah. There we go. That's without the... Oh, wow. This is so much better. Oh, my God. It's, it's a world of difference. The things I do for you guys to edit here in the dark. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely... You definitely can perceive color better, but it all comes down to what you're used to, right? Uh, I mean, I... What I do... What I generally do when I'm editing is I will sit down in front of the computer and putz around a little bit so my eyes kind of adjust to the room, adjust to the computer, adjust to the lot. Almost like, it's almost like exercising, right? You got to stretch before you exercise. I don't just sit down and start editing, right? I sit down, I kind of surf the web a little bit, I kind of move files around, I get organized to get myself accustomed to the room before I start editing. So I think that's important whether you edit in the dark or not. The, but no, that's not a uh, that's not a silly question. No, that's actually a very good question. I do live in the dark, though. Uh, yeah, I do look in it for me. <laughs> Butcher her photos. <laughs> the good thing about uh, working on these is that you don't need to do much because you know, Serena is nearly perfect. Okay, so we applied this, and it's a smidge dark for me. And again, I'm not just going to grab the exposure slider, because I started to do that, and I didn't talk about it. You see how everything starts to get washed out when you do that? So I can't just bring that up to get it. I mean, I could, right? If I do that, let's say I'm trying to get to this one. You know, now my kind of neutral, right? Uh, this is the, the one I just brought the exposure up on. Um, now my neutral is close. But you see how the whole thing looks too flat. So if I do this to bring my exposure up, I'm going to have to go back over here uh, and adjust in order to get my my midtones to look right, and probably my shadows even. So it's just a matter of you know I'm trying to I mean I'm not going to match be able to match them perfectly clearly, but uh, I can get it much closer like that. I'll bring it up a smidge more. The only problem or issue here is that if we know without masking her out, I won't be able to match the background, right? Because, you know, what I did, I'm just dealing with brightness and contrast, which works great on a three-dimensional subject, like a person, but the background's flat. So if I start bringing the highlights and the shadows down, it's just making them change. So you can see they're not exactly perfectly the same, but it's pretty close. Um, so I like that. So I'm going to copy those. Assuming that I, yep, the next frame is the same. Ah, it is not. So clearly we had one weirdo frame. So I'm going to hit Command R to undo that. I'm going to go back to the first settings I had and copy those again and come down and paste that. Yeah, that still looks a little bit bright. Again, I feel like the TTL was a little bit all over the place here. I don't know if it's because of firmware. Um, you know, because that C7 just, just came from Nikon. So it may have had like the latest firmware and maybe my photo remote did not. Um, uh, you can add buttons in the toolbar for copy and paste. Oh yeah, that is cool. Yeah, you can completely customize Capture One. And actually, <laughs> I fully custom. We took a class. Seth was in class with me and Vanessa Joy, and I fully customized it. Or I wrote down exactly how I wanted to customize it. I came back, and for the life of me, I made one. It actually, it's still here. Is it this one? And I may have gotten rid of it. I, I created my own, and then in the end, I didn't actually like it. I was, I got, I'm so used to doing it this way that I just didn't like 
my personalized one. Also, right, and Seth will make fun of me, I don't personalize the buttons on any of my cameras either. I just leave them the way they are because that's just, you know, once I'm used to it. Play D&D. &D. <laughs> Which buttons? Uh... <laughs> I often do that. This. I do have it in the top right corner. Oh yeah, that's this right here, right? Copy adjustments uh, from the primary, apply adjustments. See, to me, I, it's just faster to use the, the keyboard, but Jordan, that would, uh, you could definitely do that. If I'm here, I guess, and I go, I already pasted it here. I lost track of where I was. Oh, what happened there? Something happened. I'm gonna blame a camera malfunction here, and we'll just hit two. Oh, hmm. this one's also weird. I think I might have been moving the light around. What the hell am I doing? What was I doing here, guys? I think I, oh, no, this is interesting. This is kind of interesting, right? Um, what's fun about watch, go, going back through these, I think, uh, for anybody who's watching for the first time, is that because these are from a live demo, they're completely different than like a photo shoot would normally be. Because I'm talking about things. So I often will do things that are wrong or weird or try something just to kind of show what it look like. So those first ones, I must have just been moving the light around. Uh, this is kind of interesting, though, with the light coming from the back. You know, I like that. It's one of my faves. So let's see what would happen if we tweak this one a bit. So the only issue for me is that I don't necessarily want her eyes to be absolutely completely dark. Yeah, and I don't think that there's, yeah, see, there's nothing here for me to grab onto. So if I was going to try to make this work, I would probably come into my highlights and just bring them up and see if I can pull anything out of her eyes that's going to work. But I think there's just too much going on on her nose to make that work for me. Like this, the light just, yeah, no. So I don't try to save something. I, I just, you know, that's why we take a bunch of pictures, right? Yeah, exactly. Like her eyes are just, yeah. So we swap to the other side. Uh, and, you know, we have a completely different look now. It changes the, the, the vibe of it. We still have contrast, but we've got it coming from the other direction, which is a more favorable direction, I think. And I applied those other settings just to see where I'm at. And I think that looks pretty good. If anything, the whole thing's a hair bright, so I'm just gonna grab my exposure and just drop it. Just a tiny bit. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. We'll copy this one, because I added an exposure change. Oh, oh, there she's being like, telling me what I'm doing wrong. This I like. Yeah, yeah. This is nice. I'm gonna try to crank the blacks up on this and just see what it looks like. Now, when you start cranking the blacks up a lot, you see how I'm doing that? You see how much, uh, how much, how the saturation is kicking in? I'm going to go way too far. So you see, we see how the saturation, that looks great. Uh, yeah, see how the saturation is like over the top? So as you start bringing these darks in, make sure that if you bring them in, I don't want to say too much, but a lot, then you really want to consider your, um, your saturation, which we'll deal with in a second. So let's say I like this, because I kind of do. I'm in a saturation, uh, the contrast mood. I'm going to grab my saturation slider and I'm just gonna drop it a smidge, not too much. There we go. Yeah, I like that. It adds a little bit of mm, to it, but it doesn't like make it feel unreal. Oh no, I don't know what's going on now. Okay, there we go. Oh, that's interesting. So we see what happened here, maybe a reflector. Or some kind of fill. You saw there's a little more fill there. Am I dragging the shutter? I should probably watch back these videos before I do this so I know what I, what I did. I, it's fun for me to guess what I was doing. Um, photography school. Yeah or nah? Jeremy, you old hippie. Uh, hmm. I mean...
I think you have to consider school. Um, let's see how I say this. So when I was when I first started college back in the day, you know, my brother who is about five years older than I am, he just finished. He was out maybe a year, um, and he wrote me this letter, which I still have to this day, a paper letter. Imagine that. Um, and in it, he talks about how that when you're in school. You need to think of it as its own time in your life. Like there's something about being in school that is different than anything else that you'll ever experience. So if you go to school for the experience of being in school. So what I mean by that is you are in a classroom or classrooms with like-minded people with a, a focus, right? Um, and there's a certain period and things that you can learn from that then I think that's the right approach. If uh, if you look at it like, oh, I'm going to go to school and when I come out, like I'm going to know everything there is to know about photography or I'm going to know all the equipment or I'm going to know all this, that's probably not going to be true. Um, I think that the things that, that linger with me from when I went to school are more of the fine art things. I went to an art school, but like with painting and drawing and the sculpture and stuff like that that we had to take, which was a shock to me, um, those things stay with you, right? Because... I don't shoot so much film anymore, so learning how to process in the darkroom wasn't that important. What you learn this year in a college for photography about whatever programs people are using or whatever cameras people are using, that in 10 years, that technology is going to be different. So don't look at it like, I'm going to school to learn how to use these pieces of devices. If that's all you care about, you can learn that either on your own or by taking workshops. If you want to have the experience of being in school, then I think school is good. So there's my answer for school. So kids go to school or not, depending on what you, what you think. If that made any sense, hopefully it did. I will also say that while I was in school, I, the whole time I was like, why am I in school? I just want to shoot. But now that I look at, back at it, I'm happy that I, I went to school. I definitely, definitely learned a lot. Okay. You know, these are all tweaks. So now this is a more subtle, uh, I guess I'm using a fill here. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, the reason why I'm zooming in is I'm trying to see if I can see that the light in her eye. I mean, clearly this is the octagon. Um, somewhere over here I have a fill. Oh, I think I bounced it off the wall. Is that what I did, guys? I think I, that's what I did there. Um, filled it in. Looks nice. Oh, see? I'm a contrast guy, right? Remember we made this one more contrasty to kind of like make it whatever? Here it is, you know, more or less the same thing, just more out of camera. The only thing is this is a bit muddy. So for me, anyways, I would come in here. And keeping in mind that clearly at this point, this is not a fashion shot, right? This is a portrait. And I'm pointing that out mostly because, yes, we are going to lose detail. In fact, it's probably already not detail in that white. Oh, no, right now it's still there. We're going to lose detail here, you know. Right now, this texture, I mean, look at that. That's some texture. We're going to lose that probably to get this image where we want it, but I care more about how she looks, about the emotion note, about the feeling of the shot, than I do about the take the texture in her outfit. So I'm going to come over here, and I am actually going to ring. See, there you go. We're losing it. This and this. See what's happening? What I mentioned of what's happening with the with the saturation. So it's cranking. Let me turn that off because that's distracting. And let's drop that satch. Well, that's too much. Let's bring this up. Here I might, uh oh, we're going to venture into curves, I think. This might actually be better done with the curve. So your curves are going to allow you to, yeah, there we go. The curve is better. Oh, that's making the color crazy, though. Got to watch those curves. Again, just like anything else, you start really messing with stuff, and it will tweak the hell out of your color. It's another reason why you really want to uh, nail stuff color-wise in camera um, as much as possible. Because if you don't, then when you start tweaking it in post, it's going to get messed up. By the way, I just reset everything because I realized that I pasted on something that wasn't appropriate and then I was trying to tweak it. And that's just not the right way to go. This is such a different shot. I'm just going to start from scratch. Oh. Yeah, the light in the room is going up and down, but I don't think that really affected it. We were bouncing. 
Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, well, I say exactly, I didn't read it. Schools can teach you, um, this is a good point by, by Mark, Mark Flo. Um, schools can uh, bring you methods to acquire new knowledge and techniques. Yeah, one of the things I started to say about that letter that I didn't talk about was that my brother said was that businesses or, or companies hire people or ask you to have a degree, not because they care what you learned in school, but that they cared that you were able to learn. Like the degree is almost like just a piece of paper that says, yeah, I stuck with it and I finished it and I was able to learn this thing. It's not that they think you're going to know everything. They're going to teach you their way, right? There we go. That's better. See how it's better? Well, I started from scratch. Um, so yeah, I think school's good. I mean, you know, I wouldn't say that it's required, but I certainly think that, um, oh, and here, here's the copy, guys, if you want to do it that way, and then we can paste it. I don't know. I don't find that to be as fast because I'm constantly losing my mouse. So where'd my mouse go? Mouse, where did you go? Oh. There it is. There it is. All right, there we go. So copy, paste. I don't know why it keeps going off that side of the screen. Where's it going? Huh. Nothing over there. Okay, this this light is too. This is too dark. I don't know what I was doing there with these dark exposures. What was I doing with these dark exposures? Um, I don't think that... I think this is where we're having some weird issues with the TTL. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try to bring it up, but I think they're just probably... Well, that's not terrible. Let's see. When you start bringing your, your exposure up like that, though, you can bring noise in, which is another reason why I try to shoot at 100 ISO, you know, whenever I can, because that way I have the least, you know, 100, meaning the lowest ISO. Because that will give me the least of amount of noise, which means if I need to do this, which I didn't really want. I mean, bringing up a stop is a lot, but, you know, that's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. So now I'm just tweaking my levels again, getting it where I like it. That's pretty good. It's important to, like, tilt your head to the side when you're looking at stuff. It's very important. Head tilt is good. I feel like this whole thing has a green feel to it, too, for some reason. I don't know why. I should have done a custom white bounce. There we go. That's better. Get in here. For some reason, it's looking a little green. That looks so much better. Wow. There we go. Let's see. Uh, for some reason, it was at 0.1, and 0 is actually better. Ha! Huh, look at you. I don't know why it was at point one. I guess that's part of the uh, the what they considered to be the flash white balance. But to me, that was looking weird. So, copied that. Come down to the next one. A little paste action. That's too bright. Yeah. Wow. I definitely need to upgrade the uh, the firmware on my remote because the TTL is all over the place. Uh, oh yeah, 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 in Photoshop you can do different blend, you can do uh, adjustment layers, which I don't think they have in this. I mean, I guess they do, because you can drop a layer on top and do adjustments, so you probably could do that. I just don't do that in Capture One, but that is true, you could do that. I guess if my general philosophy with all that is that if I have to go that far, that's really tweaking the color more than a quick little saturation uh, fix, then I, it's probably not worth, you know, doing. Because to me, like, I, I'd rather get it as close as possible. I'm not, I'm not trying to get back to the studio or my house in this case uh, at the end of a shoot and being like, oh my god, I have to save all these images. You know, if I'm in that situation, I'm going to be very sad. Uh, this I don't like. Whoosh, what happened there? That is flat. I guess we were dealing with flat light here. Oh yeah, I brought the sub box in from the front for the flatness. Um, let's remove those things. So this is a completely different lighting setup. So once again, I'm gonna go in there and tweak it. This is very flat by its nature. Um, so let's see if we can bring a little bit out with our levels. 
Yeah, even though that is probably the proper exposure, the whole thing, it looks a little dark. When you use flat light, sometimes things just look dark because they just, they just do. It's flat. You need, you know, you, you like, your eye likes to see contrast, right? It likes to grab contrast. So I'm actually going to overexpose it a smidge. Yeah, like I actually think that's too bright, like technically. But I feel like that's really where I need to be in order to make this work. So where am I at with my exp yeah, and I'm only getting a little bit of lapel blast, so I'm good. Those earrings are never going to be, they're always going to be blown out. They're, they're reflective. You know, this is what makes things reflective, by the way. Like, if you look at this, the this earring, I mean, you could, obviously, if it's a product shoot, you could go in there and make the lines perfect. But what you want when you're photographing something that's reflective is you want to see the, you know, the color, the actual color, which is just like gold or brass color. And you want to see dark and you want to see light. That actually creates the three-dimensional thing and that makes it feel... Um, like it's in space. Uh, you just want to have more control over it, you know, if it's actually a product shot. All right, so I'm going to copy those settings. Let's go to the next one. Boom. Yeah. Wow, this is really flat. We're, we're super flat. It's funny I went so flat after, after being so contrasty. It just seems so weird to me. Uh... The other capture one could do that. You know, you uh, you can, but you can paint it in. So with capture one, as far as layers, what you can do is, well, I'm not sure. You can you can adjust. Yeah, you can't do like luminosity blends. No, you can't do that. But you can do like a layer with an adjustment, and then just adjust certain parts of it. I guess that's what you would be able to do. Which actually is not nearly the same thing as what you're saying. So yeah. Again, one more reason why I have to have Photoshop, even though I don't want to have it because it's expensive. Uh, got to watch Seth stream from yesterday later. Yes, pretty good. Oh, wait, Vanessa is here but not chatting? How do you know Vanessa's there? We're using the softbox or the magnum reflector. Uh, yeah, this is definitely a soft. This this is two softboxes at this point. Um, I'm kind of remembering now. It was it was a big daze, but I can also see it in her eyes. Here, I'll go more than here, I'll do this. Uh, you know, we can see there's an octagon, and then we and there's also uh, the rectangular softbox. Little double little double soft action. So this is an on access soft fill with the, you know, the octagon creating shape. And she's like, work. Okay, so this is an example of just the lighting not working for the pose, right? This is not, uh, because of the way the light's coming in, it's just amplifying everything that we don't necessarily want to highlight in a face. Right, so, so it's coming this way, and what's happening is it's throwing extra shadow, you know, around here because remember our lights over here, so it's it's throwing this like amplifying this darkness with no fill, and then this here, right, which everybody has, just part of your face, and then here, so it's actually making the the face seem like it's uh it's got more texture than we really want. It's just not not a good angle, right? So you have to be aware of that, right? Uh, when you're lighting something like this. This would have probably been fine if I wasn't filling it because this would all be shadow, it would be moody. But because it's flat, it just looks like bleh. So, no to that. See how when she's looking back towards the light? Even though you still have the same areas of darkness, they're just in a better position. So they actually look better, right? They add a nicer shape to the face. So be, be aware of that when you're kind of moving somebody uh, with the light, you know? Basically... You want to be that lady in Poltergeist who's like, look into the light. Like, that's what you want to do. Checking the users in the chat. Oh, I didn't know they could do that. You guys are so high tech. By the way, I haven't been freezing or anything, right? I think this is actually going pretty smoothly. Um, I should make a new profile here, I guess. Yeah, why not? Uh, oh, catch light detective. 
It's true. Yeah, definitely not to uh, share. <laughs> ah, share. Share is awesome. I, I mean, share is still around and, and, and killing it, so I, I got nothing, nothing negative to say about her. Okay. That, by the way, with the, the hands, that's, that's called the bunny rabbit. Right, classic pose. You put your hands in front. I have to do it really high because you can't see me. It's very delicate. Oh, that's a powerful. That's a power pose right there. Then she's like, whoosh. uh, this one seems a smidge dark. So I'm gonna come in, whoop. and I'm gonna when I do that, I'm gonna still bring the blacks down so I can have this. Uh, yeah, nice. That looks pretty good. I'm, I'm actually gonna copy the things here and come back down. Yeah, that's good, I like that. Well, I love in the airings. They're just like, bam. Uh, good, yeah. There's nothing to hate here, guys. So we're just moving down, applying the same settings to each one. You know, they're minor, actually. Bum, ba -da -bum. Clearly, I was trying something different. <laughs> uh, Dan, you have a mask with the pick of the puppet, but does the puppet have a mask with the pick of you? <laughs> okay, I may steal that. I did steam the outfit. Yeah. I gotta say, I, I actually, there's something relaxing about steaming clothes. You know, I'm, I'm all about the steam. All right. Ironing, not so much. Steaming, yes. Oh, yeah, we're busting out a rim light there. Huh. Look, my exposure still is smidge dark. Okay, I just applied those other settings just to see what would happen. You know, sometimes I'll do that just as like a quick look, although clearly I'm probably going to have to go in and tweak it. Although that's not bad. Um, I will say it bumped the, uh, the the saturation up a smidge, so I'm going to come in a little bit and just drop that. And now this is the thing, right, guys? You might have you look at it, right, and because she has warm skin, you might have been like, "Whoa, it got really warm. Let me fix the white balance." But that's not the white balance; it's becoming more saturated. So you definitely want to, you know, be wary of that. Don't change your white balance. You want to change your saturation. Yeah, that was good. Again, I'm copying. And dropping these in. This definitely has a different. Uh, oh, that's better. This definitely has a different vibe to it than than the you know the two lights from the front. Like if we look at this. Ah, which one? Else? There it is. So we look at this versus this. You know we can see the difference here, right? We're basically using the same two lights. Here we've got the octagon shaping the face. You can see the highlight and stuff here, and then a softbox in front filling all this, so it's nice and flat. And then here we've got the octagon shaping the face. So again, you still have that highlight here in the shadow coming down. And then we've got a kicker, right? Or a separation light or whatever you want to call it. And what that's going to end up doing is look, I mean, it does a lot of things. Number one, it obviously adds some mystery and drama. But also if you look at the shape of the outfit, right? We can see, uh, you know, the kind of where the wrinkles are and stuff. So it adds some depth. You can see on her neck, you see more of the, the muscle, you know, and tendons. You see more cleavage, Right. This basically adds a little bit more kind of uh, oomph to the shot. And this is true. Somebody sent me a message and said, could you do like a bodybuilder? Same thing. If you want to do somebody who's like musky, has like a lot of muscles, this is a great way to do it, right? You want to throw that shadow in. This here is going to be too flat, right? So you definitely want to, uh, you know, consider that when you're doing this. It's not just about like, okay, here's a different thing that I can do, Right. It's about which thing works for the mood and feeling I'm trying to create. Right here you got like Rembrandt lighting, kind of. Except less, so we can say that. Yep. Uh, 
Oh yeah, you gotta keep a steamer. Steamers are like key, and it's always painful to buy a steamer because they're like a good, like a professional one's like maybe two hundred bucks, maybe a little bit more depending on where you get it from. So it's like, oh, I could buy whatever with that. But man, having a steamer and you'll have it forever. Don't buy those cheap old travel ones. Get a good steamer if you're gonna actually be doing, you know, any kind of uh, significant amount of work. Uh, let's see. After you go through the technical fixes, you have quite a number of similar photos. How do you call them down? Uh, do you leave them or do you make the final selection? Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll go back through after. Like once we get them all done, I'll go through again and we'll, we'll, we'll go through faster. Um, what I'll say though is, you know, because this is actually a very common question. You know, how do I, it depends on the person I'm giving them to. You know, especially actors are going to want different expression, right? So yeah, these to, to us, right, like you wouldn't use all three of these because they're basically the same shot for us. But for an actor, you know, these are all slightly different personalities and they may want to use all of them. So if, if it's somebody who I think has use for all the different ones, I will certainly give them a lot. However, if they are new, new to the business and I think they might get overwhelmed by it, then I'll be much more um, diligent in in removing ones that I think aren't the best, if you know what I'm saying. You know, so that's we'll do that though at the end. I mean, actually, right now I'm I'm not finding too many that I'm dumping, which is surprising to be honest with you, uh, since this was from a demo. But uh, there's a lot here that are that are very useful. Um, okay, we switched stuff. I still applied that setting uh, just to see what it would do. I think it made it a little bit too bright. Uh, and remember, I brought the exposure up, so let me actually bring that back down to zero. Okay, that seems about right. I might give it a little bit more. Sometimes I'll do, this is rare that I do this, but sometimes I just grab this contrast slider. See what that does? It's just giving me a tweak here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to put it back for a second. I'm just going to bring my exposure back up where it's a bit brighter than I want it to be. And then I'll bring the contrast slider in. This gives it almost that, like, painterly kind of vibe it's very it's not the, you know it's one of those so like this whole section here exposure this is something you tweak after you've done this stuff or curves depending on how you uh you know depending on if you're a curve person or a levels person i feel like there's two camps there i'm a levels person you do this first right this is my primary adjustment then i'm going to go here for any minor minor tweaks so don't I see a problem that a lot of people do or a mistake I think that a lot of people do is they grab the exposure slider first when they see something that's dark and they bring it over and then they start tweaking it and that's how you end up with these like weird uh, highlights that are blown out and you can't get the contrast the way you want it. Get your contrast right first and then if you need to give it a little more or less exposure, do that then. Um, I actually like how we washed it a lot. Oh, oh man, that's unfortunate because it's out of focus. I like that one too. Damn it. No, it's not focused anywhere. What's going on there? I mean, it's 200 of a second. Huh. Weird. It almost looks like it's, uh... I might have shot, like, just when it was, uh... It's still trying to find its focus. Because it's just a smidge out. All right, well, I'm going to copy those settings because those look good. And then I'll just go down this one. Well, that was a bummer. But anyways, um... Yeah, it's not as nice. Ah, the other shot is so much nicer. I mean, this is still nice, but the other shot I think was nicer. Yeah, bummer. See, now I think it might look a little too bright for me. Like a little too contrasty, I should say. So I'm going to drop that contrast back down. I feel like with her turn towards me, I don't want it overly contrasty. I got rid of it, and now this looks nicer. Like it was just, it was starting to break up here, which I didn't really care for. So, yeah. Okay, good. So I'm going to, I like that. Copy that. Paste. Oh, yeah. This definitely has a different vibe, right? This is actually the softbox real close and above. This is a, a rectangular softbox. Yeah. And it's like right... Well, it's actually how I'm, I'm lit. So, you know. It's more or less... Except it's like here. So. Anyways. So, clearly I like to light like that. Because <laughs> that's how I lit myself. Actually, I let myself this way because this is the only where I can put the light. I'd much rather have the light over here. But then I have a huge shadow on the wall. Uh, anyways. Yeah, I like this. 
Okay. Then we switch. Now we're going hard, right? Now we're hitting the hard light. We're like, boom, that was easy. That was soft. That was gentle. Now let's wham. And as soon as you switch to hard light, immediately the clothes change. It's weird. It's just like, boom. Now all of a sudden the dress looks red. It's weird. Uh... Yeah, this is the start of the harder light, softer light. No, this is the start of the harder light. I think you asked the other side. Nope. Level person here, yep. <laughs> uh, oh, you remember from the stream being out of focus. See, I don't remember. When I'm streaming, I'm in like a different world. Because Seth's yelling at me and he's like, Oh, it's not working. Tell them to hold it. I'm like, uh, I'm just trying to do a shoot here. You know? All right. Here we go. Hard light. I'm guessing this is just the light by itself with no modifier. Yeah. Not terrible. You know, this was also steamed. Well, that's interesting. That almost looks like there's some kind of a blur going on there. But it's sharp there. Weird. Weird. What is that? Smudge in the lens, perhaps? Actually, it could have been that not much of the light was hitting down here. I don't, I don't know why that would be blurry down there. Because I am still shooting at a 200th of a second. At f11, so it can't be daylight coming in. You know what? I don't think I would normally like this shot, but I think I like it. And I like it pretty much the way it is. This is too dark, and I'm not going to try to save it. This I'm not in love with. This I like, but it's too dark. So, because this one is too dark, but I like it, I'm going to come in and try to see if I can... Uh, Help it a bit. I'm gonna grab my mids, bring those up, and I'm gonna grab my highlights for contrast, and then drop my blacks back. Yeah, there we go. That's not terrible. And again, because I did all that, I'm gonna drop the saturation. This one almost feels like a black and white shot, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, and of course, whenever you make a shot that's not good because of your lighting and stuff, switching to black and white is always the secret. No, I just think it's, nope, doesn't look good in black and white. There you go. Because the contrast in this shot, and I guess I should have known that because I'm looking at it and if you squint at it, her skin tone, especially like if you look at the lips and the, the, the blush area here, this is very similar to the tone of the, of the dress. Which means that when I drop it into black and white, what we end up getting is a very flat image, right? If she, if she had very, very like uh, pale skin or like a bluish tone in her skin, like something opposite of the, of the red, uh, you know, she might have been able to pop with contrast, but really it's the color here that gives it power. So, yeah, this stays color. There you go. You you probably see a... Uh, a um, uh, what do you call it? If you watch enough of these, you probably see me do this a lot. Whenever I say, oh, let's see what this looks like in black and white, I never like it. Because I, I always shoot... When I plan on doing something in black and white, I always shoot with that in mind. So I almost never turn a color shot black and white. It's very rare that I'll do that in like, because um, I like differently for black and white. Uh, with soft light, would you have her uh, pose differently? Get her arm off the side of her negative space, she'll shape, maybe. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that uh, when we look at the nature of the softer light. I think that, yeah, I think the poses do do come naturally differently because the implication of using soft light, you know, soft light has a different feel to it, right? It, it Hard light is gonna be about shape and form and shadow and where soft light, I mean, you can have that clearly, you can have shadow and stuff in soft light as we see here, but it has like a more open look, right? These are actually very similar, right? In, in the positioning of the light. Um, but you know, one is with more of a hard light and one's with softer light and it definitely feels different, right? It has a different, besides the fact that she's changed, obviously, um, it just feels different. You know, the contrast on her skin. Yeah. I think that you do pose slightly different with a hard light. I mean, I would say, but I also see, I generally think about it the other way around. I will say that I very rarely plan my light first and then have the person come in. If that makes sense. Like, I don't go... I mean, unless I'm making a video about something. I don't go, I'm going to use a beauty dish today. And then when the person gets there, pose them around the beauty dish. 
I look at the person, I see what I want to create with them, I see what they're wearing, I see the vibe of the day, what we want to shoot, and then I use light for that. So would I pose somebody different with hard light? It probably for me is almost the opposite, but the same meaning that I would light somebody different with different posing, if that makes sense. So that's a roundabout way to say kind of the same thing, but that's basically what it is for me. I don't think about, I don't light somebody, um, I don't think about the light first. I think about the person first. The light is actually set based on the person, not the other way around. You know, unless I have to do the light for something. Like, let's say I'm doing, again, I'm doing a demo or something like that than this. That'd be a different thing. Because I think most people can look good in most types of light. You just have to kind of, you know, open your your mind to it, right? A lot of times people be like, well, hard light's good for this. Or, you know, anybody can look in hard light if you use the right kind of hard light. It just kind of... And I think the best example of that is if you watch movies. Lots of hard light is used in movies. Lots of hard light on all different types of people. And it, it looks good, you know? I mean, it's just... So here we're playing around a little bit. I think I've switched to the Magnum here. Probably like right there. That looks like it could be the Magnum. That's definitely the Magnum. I think this is. It might be. Nope, that's not. Yep. Yeah. See? Oh, all right. So this is the Magnum, right? Not the Magnum, the Magnum. Not the Magnum, the Magnum. And what we see here is they're both hard sources, right? I mean, the Magnum is actually a little bit softer than the head by itself because the Magnum is, you know, I don't know, 18 inches where the head by itself is four inches. So it is actually a little bit softer, but also the Magnum reflector has, I think 50 degrees is the spread on it without a, without a grid. Whereas the regular reflector is 120 or 140, something that's like a lot, right? And people always say, oh, it's flat. So you, it's super wide. The, the, the pro photo is very wide, the spread of it. So, by adding the magnum reflector, not only do we, well, we're amplifying the light, but we're also, because we're focusing it, right? Focusing the light amplifies it, right? Uh, that's why I say with like grids don't focus the light. Barn doors don't focus the light. They shape it and control it. Um, a reflect, a hard reflector focuses the light, meaning that it gives you more light. It's like, you know, because it's taking that same amount of light and pushing it into a smaller spot. But because of that, we have more, we have greater fall off. And this fall off actually is, is much more pleasing to me anyways, right? This just feels nicer. Where this is just, I mean, this is fine, right? Uh, I mean, I don't particularly love that shot, but you know, you get what I'm getting at here. Yeah, look how much nicer this. Uh, here we just started messing around with it. That's, that's kind of crappy. Nope, nope, uh, nope. Oh, here we're talking about a little reflector flecked. Nope. I think I switched back to white there. Nope, I'm not really liking these. The Magnum takes a minute to get... Oh, actually, that one would be all right. If I, I think I just overexposed it. The Magnum takes me a minute to get where I want it where I, where I want it to go, but then once it's there, I typically really like it. Because it's very tasty. Like, you're going to get these, like, these really, really hard shadows. Yeah. Let's make this one... Yeah, there we go. All right, you see what I'm doing? See how, again, you see the saturation popping, right? Got to watch that. Boom. Huh. Uh huh. See, whenever I say something, you will immediately see me contradict myself. And that is the beauty of life. Uh, this actually, when I, when I was looking at it, I was like, oh, you know what? This almost looks like how oh, lighter in black and white. And sure enough. All right, here I'm messing with my reds and yellows. Mostly that's going to be her skin tone, right? We'll fuck with the other ones and see if they do anything. They don't, really. Uh, no, not really. That's going to mess with the dress, right? You see that? Ah, oh, there she has a silver dress. We'll do that. Yeah, that, that's futzing with the dress. This is doing nothing. Because there's nothing in the shot that would affect. Usually you see me use this, and I always say that. Oh, these don't do anything. They do anything because we're shooting a portrait in the studio. If you were shooting, like, trees or the, the sky or whatever, you know, then, then those would make more of a difference. Obviously, I'm not going to do that with the dress because that's stupid. All right, I actually like this one. Black and white. 
Weird. Huh. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to make a wall black and white, but I like that one in black and white because it was overexposed. That was an outlier. Let's come back. All right. And now we've got... Wow. I'm all over the place. Exposure was. All right. This guy right here looks... a little bit on the dark side. Um, but again, I don't do my exposure slider right away. First, I'm going to get my contrast where I want it. Yeah, because even just doing this is making me say maybe it's fine. Yeah. Uh, maybe give it a little bit of bright. Actually, I'm going to give it brightness instead. Brightness is kind, of, is kind of like contrast in a sense, except it is more on the brights. I'm going to give it a smidge of brightness, and then I'm going to come up and grab the exposures. I kind of, because this is a punchy hard light, I kind of want her highlights, like on her forehead and stuff, to be close to, to popping. So I'm watching those, right? I want those to be bright. So I'm kind of just watching them um, until they get to a point where it's almost too much. There we go. That's good. Cool. All right, yeah. That's that's marvelous. That's good. Boom. Oh, a little tweaky tweak. Who knows what happened here? Who knows what happens in the mysteries of life? <laughs> oh, I know what I'm doing. I was testing the uh, the fill. I think I decided to add some fill. Yep. See how that's a rectangle? No, no. It's not a rectangle. That's actually the octagon, rather. It looks like a rectangle because her eyes, were, uh, her eyelid was touching it. Because I put the octagon behind for fill. To do an on-axis fill. Uh, so, obviously this is no good. Okay, now we're combining the lights. And it takes me a minute to kind of mix them. So, here, you know, this is straight up magnum. This is like, bam, in your face. Same thing with that. Here we're bringing in a fill light, right? We're making it a little more gentle. Part of the challenge with this is getting it exactly in the right position. So, you do your double, double shadow, which you're going to get, right? One shadow, two shadow. Your double shadow needs to be kind of blend together in a way that feels more natural. That's a big point of this. And your exposure just needs to be about right. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, hey, Eric. Yeah, the dark lipstick does work in black and white for some things. Yes. Uh. Huh. Yeah, I cannot do. Um. I cannot do the mustache. I'm gonna say that I tried to do the mustache thing. You're supposed to do it in November. But yeah, it, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay, this is not terrible. This is right out of the camera, too. So let me just... I'm not super in love with the double shadow, but it does not it's not terrible. So I'll try to save this one by tweaking it a tiny bit. Nah, I know there's plenty of good ones. Ah, see, already that's better. So again, I'm just doing my normal tweaky tweak. I always do the levels. That's where I get my contrast. Might do that a tiny bit here. No, I don't think I have to. Oh, but I did it a little bit. And brightness. Yeah, that's pretty good. Copy that. There. And this really just comes down to, you can see it's getting more even, where the double shadow is becoming more. Because look, both light sources are there. That's an octagon and a, and a magnet reflector. Creating basically uh, kind of the opposite of what a beauty dish would do. Because, you know, a beauty dish is going to be, has a deflector in the middle to not have a hot spot, right? Where this basically, I'm giving them a hot spot. You know, them being Sharina. Yeah, that's pretty darn good right there. I just crank my blocks back a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, like that. Good. That's pretty good. I don't really like that image, but I like the exposure. Ah, there we go. Boom. Right? That's what you get into it, right? Finally, everything is working out. 
we're getting a, a good uh, exposure. Everything's set, you know. Takes a minute, so I got rid of that one, uh, to bring them in, but now we're here. And again, these are, a lot of these are very similar, but I think that for the most part, you know, when you're an actor, you know, if anybody's ever done actor headshots before, like, there is a world of difference between those those shots to an actor. Like, depending on which one they choose is going to be huge. And they can actually, you know, use any of them. So, again, I'll probably leave more images than not uh, for her. Uh, I'm not loving now. Oh. Got her smile a little bit. There we go. It's not easy. Yeah, there we go. That's the that's the one. That's the one that I'll have. So you know, someday when you know Shrin is super super famous and I have my book. I mean, not that she's not already super super famous, but even more famous, so I can make millions. I gotta you know right now I can go. I don't think the millions would come in. So the difference here, and one of the reasons why I like to use a Magnum for like these kind of beauty style, like punchy shots, is it's definitely a harder light. And it, it, again, what makes a beauty dish good is that it doesn't have that hot spot, even though it's, it's still hard light. But the Magnum has the hot spot. Like that's kind of the point of it, right? The point of it is to have that like whack. Um, and you know, just, it can be really powerful. I like with just a little bit of that turn. I think that's actually where I like it the best. This is very classic, but I really like that little bit, personally. Oh, best one. This is the best one, no question. Oh. Uh, okay. I think we were trying to bang out a quick, couple quick because we had lost the connection. Oh, there we go. That's from my uh, from my catalog. <laughs> oh, shot. There we go. Bam. Back to it. That looks good. Good. To be honest, these are pretty perfect. I'm not doing anything to them out of camera. These are actually all good. It's all good. I'm not loving that. I don't know what happened there. She's got like a strange lean back going, which is fine, but I think my composition is just not as good as it could be. Which sometimes happens when you're in the middle of a demo. Yeah, that's how I like. So the reason why some of them I'm not having to do anything to and other ones I am is basically because the light is very close to her and we're working it, right? We're moving and we're kind of in, in it together and Sometimes she's going to move an inch or two forward, and that will change the, the pattern of the light. And when that happens, that's when a slight tweak is needed because I took it out of TTL. Um, and even if you're in TTL, you know. Like this exposure and this exposure are both probably actually correct, right? But because of her head being slightly further down, this part of her face down here is darker, right? Than this part that's facing up towards the light. That has to do with the, the angle of reflectance, right? When something's facing, like you can look at any light, right? If something's like here, you can see my hand, right? And then I point it up towards the light, you see how it's brighter. The exposure has not changed, right? The exposure is the same. But based on the angle of the light to the subject, it looks brighter. And it is brighter, right? The actual reflective exposure is brighter, but the light falling on it's the same. So, um, so even though these are the same exposure and they're both bright technically, this one over here on the right-hand side um, feels a little darker. So I think I would grab my mids and bring up a smidge like that. And again, I'm not gonna try to match match them because I don't need to, but uh, that's the reason why it looks that way. Sometimes when you're looking at an image and you're just like, what's going on there? You have to consider your angle, you know? Reflective angle is super important when, when you're talking about exposure, right? Depending on the angle of something to the light, it's going to look brighter or darker. And that's where your brain and your artistic uh, you know, uh, ability or, or thought process is going to come in and you're going to decide what exposure is correct for you. Uh, clean shaven. Uh, hmm. Uh, all right, so she was rocking the expressions by herself. Well, I mean, a lot of this comes down to, you can't coach somebody to smile. You know, like that's just not gonna happen. Um, what you have to do 
is create an environment that people feel comfortable in expressing themselves. I mean, if they're an actor, then they should be able to create different expressions, right? Um, if somebody just is stumped or maybe they're nervous, um, what you can do is you can set up little scenes. Um, you know, you could be like, okay, I usually tell them to close your eyes. Close your eyes, you know, uh, think of this scene from a movie or, or, or pretend like you're angry. You're here in this thing. You see somebody you haven't seen in a long time. You, a, a close friend approaches you while you're sitting in a cafe. Uh, you see that person that slighted you the other day, you, you know, or whatever, you know, you, you give them like a little bit of a scene and then you say, okay, when you, you know, ex give me that expression when you open your eyes and then they kind of come into it. Right. Um, and when they, they, they do that, you just shoot a handful of shots, you know, you shoot a few. That's basically, that's one tip for that kind of stuff. Uh, but part of that comes down to just creating an environment where they're going to feel, um, comfortable expressing themselves and also be descriptive as far as how the lighting is because people don't understand if you're standing in my studio in in the middle of the day it looks like it's lit but if i'm lighting you with flash and there's only light coming from over here you're probably not going to know that unless you're more experienced so you need to make sure you tell them that and you need to very very much explain it to them say when you're looking this way your face is in the light if you turn this way, you are going to be in the dark. So make sure that you're looking this way because I want your face to be, in, you know, whatever, you know, or maybe you want them in the dark, who knows? But you, you want to, you know, it's just about communicating. I mean, that's just, that's all it is, you know, and I think that's super important. Uh, anyways, back to this. Uh, Uh, do I further work on these in Photoshop? So what I'll do is, um, if needed, <laughs> uh, if needed or requested, then I might do some minor touch up. Um, typically I'm only going to want to, personally for my style, I only want to, um, these are funny because it's like a, a, yeah, that's, that's fun. I only... <laughs> Oh, this is this is gonna be my desktop picture. Hold on, I gotta move forward something. Um, I only want to uh, retouch uh, what needs to be retouched if somebody really asks me. You know, um, I don't typically do extra work to it unless I'm asked to do it. Uh, so the answer to that is, well, number one answer is I wouldn't do anything right away. I'm gonna send to Sharina in this case all the images, right, and then. Um, when I do that, she'll pick the one she wants to use. And if she comes back and she's like, hey, you know what? I really like this image, but, you know, I don't know. This flyaway hair right here, you know, is bothering me. And then I'll go in and Photoshop it. I mean, you know, so I certainly can do it. It's just not something I would do right away. That hand does look weird to me, though. It's a weird hand placement for me. Um, I'm going to get rid of it because I don't love the photo. Um, yeah, I think I was too close for me. I'm not a big hands person, as you probably know if you've... <laughs> Been around a bit. I'm not going to have hands in shots. Uh, I'm not loving this. Oh, interesting. See here, mm, yeah, no. yeah, better. Okay. I am dealing with a lot of hard light, which actually can become an issue, right? Because now we're getting. I think I almost added another another light. Oh, I added that hot light right from the back. That's what's going on here. Mm, you know, in a scene. This might not bother me, but if I was coming down and looking at this, I'm not in love with this shadow. I mean, that is something I might consider touching on if I really love this image. It would be easy enough. For, I mean, I might be able to do it here. This is the segment where I try to retouch something in Capture One, and we'll see how I succeed or not. So I'm going to click over here, and I'm going to go New Clone Layer. Again, I would probably do this in... Uh, actually, this is the way you can do an adjustment layer if you wanted to do it with like brightness or darkness. But I think I'm just going to clone it out because that seems like it might work. So I'm just going to paint in the area. Ooh. 
why am why isn't I going to the brush? Oh, I don't want clone anyways. Hold on. I do that every single time. I want heal. Do you heal layer? Why is it switching? Weird. Okay, I did something wrong. Uh oh, Capture One hates me for some reason. I can't get my, my thing. It doesn't want me to do it. You know what I'm going to do? Let me just quit this for a second. I think I'm having a little weirdness going on. I'm just going to restart it. I don't know why that would be an issue, but you never can tell. How's the audio, by the way? It's not uh, lagging? Uh, healing math. Oh, <laughs> modeling lights are from models. That's true. The modeling lights can help them if they don't understand where the light's coming from. That's actually one downside, I think, to using a lot of these battery-powered lights. I tend to not use the modeling lights like I used to. You know, in the past, um, I would... I'm just going to do this really quickly and see if this even will work at all. Um, I think I did too much of it at once. Oh boy. Oh boy. No, 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 no. That's no good. I don't think that's going to work. Um, I mean, I have to do it in chunks. I could do it a little bit more up here. Oh, I still haven't downloaded the new version where you can put multiple pot spots. So I got to make another heal layer. And then I can just heal up here slightly. I, I probably would do this in Photoshop, but every week I'd try to do one little thing and capture one just to see if I can pull it off. Someday I'll, I'll become more of a... Yeah, I would do this in about three seconds in Photoshop. This is actually terrible. So I wouldn't do that. I would do it in Photoshop if I was going to do it. Um, that, But that's the kind of weird thing that bothers me. I really like the shot, actually. Actually, let's do it in Photoshop. Dun, 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 dun. I probably could do it in Capture One if I really sit here and try hard enough, but you know what? Why bother? We might as well use Photoshop since we pay for it. So I'm going to go, uh, let's see, edit with Photoshop. I'm going to open it as a PSD, full size, 100%, right? And what's going to end up happening here is, oh, so actually, you can do this if you want to... Uh, have it keep the crop and everything and the sharpening and all that other stuff. Um, I'm not cropping or anything and I haven't done anything to it, so I'm good to just leave it like this. All right, let's see. Let's look at the chat while this opens up. We can't see what you're doing. You can't see what I'm doing? Oh, da 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 da. Sorry, guys. Thank you. <laughs> so what I did was I tried to, to heal it and it just didn't look good. Um, basically, it just... The new version of Capture One, which I downloaded but I haven't installed yet, allows you to have multiple points and draw from, but the old version is just kind of... Yeah, it's kind of crap. So, uh, for that. Because you have to make a different heal layer every single time and it's just... I'm, I don't have time for that. Anybody got time for that? So, it's much easier to do it in Photoshop, which is where I'm at right now. Um... I'm going to switch to the zoom tool. And what I might do here, again, this is only because I'm not loving this. It's really just this part of it too. You got to be careful with these kind of things because I don't want to get rid of all of this necessarily because then it might look weird because there's another shadow up here. It's so easy to get ahead of yourself in Photoshop and do way too much. So I think I'm going to somewhere around here. So let me just grab my, I think I'm going to use the patch. I'm a fan of the patch tool. And I want to make it feel very organic, so I'm just going to, like, grab it like this. I probably should have went all the way to the edge, but that's fine. I have it on 
content to wear. Oh, okay. And I'm probably gonna do it a couple of times here. You know, I'm just trying to make this so that, yeah, it's looking a little bit better. And again, I'm just doing this really fast. If, if, if I actually decide to do this, I'll spend time and do it in like 20 pieces. I'm just doing it really quickly to show you that. Actually, it might be fine. So again, I, I don't wanna necessarily get rid of all of this shadow because it matches up with that. So let's go back. Let's look at it more at a more reasonable size. Oh, no. yeah. So we do that. Yeah. See, I just. I think I might actually come in and bring it a little bit more here. It would just be a subtle. The other thing you could do, which I don't think will work as well, is you could use the just the regular clone, uh, the healing brush. I mean that can, might work. It's tricky. I wouldn't use the the spot healing brush to be honest with you. Um, I would only use the regular healing brush so you can choose where you're getting your point from, because I think that's just a better way to do this. So I'm option clicking to pick my spot. Oop, I think I did too many. Let's go back. Um, yeah. So, right, so there, that's the first sweep with the healing brush. I actually think that's pretty good. So, what I'm doing is I'm option clicking and I'm choosing where I'm getting it from. Right, this way it, it's more natural. If you use the, the spot healing brush, it decides for you, which to me works great when you're trying to like remove pimples and stuff. But when you're doing this kind of stuff, you really want to pick. No, no, that last one's no good. Okay. That's probably the way I would do it. Z. Yeah, there we go. Cause I want I want I want it to feel natural, you know. Um, I might even actually come in here because this highlight is really nice, but it doesn't. You see how the highlight is getting like blown. So what I might do or cut off rather. Let's just see if I do this. I'm defying physics because clearly the earring is blocking the light, right? But it doesn't, you know, it's not making the, the shape that I want to make. So I'm cheating a little bit. There we go. Yeah. See? I'm just redirecting it, you know? Good enough. That's basically it. Let's see. I'm definitely using a grid, yes. I am always just talking to myself, yes. Uh, let's see. Just try, hey Tyler. Shooting baseball, awesome. Uh, when you use the patch tool, can you soften the border edge? Um, yeah, I think so. Maybe. No, I think the way that you... Mm, let me see. I don't know. I'm, if you can do exactly that. I think what you can do... So basically, when you're doing your, your patch tool... Um, now, I, I just think that when you um, when you do it, I mean, I could be, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not a Photoshop certified, blah, blah, Adobe person, but I think when you do content aware, it kind of does that for you, the softening of the edge, right? It doesn't really soften the edge, but what it does is it's grabbing what's around it. So it helps make it feel more natural. If you do just regular, then you can definitely get a hard edge. I mean, no question. Like if I go here and I switch it to normal, and I like grab something, you know, you can see that the edges, I mean, that's like perfect, right? Uh, you can see the edge is like very direct, whereas the content to wear is gonna give it you a little bit of a softer edge. Uh, I saved that, right? I already saved it, so I'm good. All right, so that's basically it, right? We can see that's nicer than the original, so I'll make the original too. Oh yeah, here we are, I think Seth took this picture. You can tell, when Seth takes pictures, you know, people are scared. They're, they're, you know, they're like, oh my God, what's happening? Uh, <laughs> everybody a <have> coffee. <laughs> uh, time for bed. 
Well, good night. Uh, let's see. Oh, I did get the coffee. I thought you meant like just right now. I just got it, actually. I got it. Thank you for the coffee. It's going to write you a message, but I'll tell you in person. Yes, I got the coffee at the studio. Uh, I'm going to, I haven't used it yet because I, I, I don't have a grinder, but I think I can grind it in my magic bullet. So I'm going to try that. I've been using the AeroPress because I lost power, so I couldn't use my uh, Keurig. So now I'm kind of addicted to the AeroPress. So this is perfect timing because I'm going to grind it up and use it in my AeroPress, which is, yeah. So thank you for the coffee. Uh, oh man yeah i am baseball i don't you know i had a very short stint shooting sports uh mostly tennis and whew, yeah it's a lot of work there's a lot of like concentration that goes into it so yeah scared no uh awkward no out of focus no there we go I don't know what we were doing here. I think we were messing around with flares and stuff. Looks a little soft. Yeah, it's focused back here on the back of her ear. Which is clearly the most important part. Oh. There we go. That's when stuff was breathing on the lens. See, that to me is just not going to work by itself. Uh, but, let's see. If we can give it a little more con. I mean, clearly, when you do this, it's... Uh, killing the contrast, right? That's literally what it's doing. So I'm going to try to bring some of the contrast back to make it a, kind of a viable shot. Eh. Nope. No breath on the lens. No breath on the lens, a little overexposed. I think we're messing around with exposure time. There we go again. Nah, nah. Uh, here I was waiting till it was just on part of it, but I think it's just, I don't know, that's just not my thing. I'm sorry. Sorry, Seth, I know you you like these gimmicks to show showcase how to do them, but, you know, I, I just, I, I'm not a gimmick person. It doesn't work for me. I never, I never like the results. They are fun to show, though, so you guys can kind of see and understand how things work. I don't know. Yeah, I don't like that shot either. We're running into a whole bunch of shots I'm not going to like. Oh, I like her attitude here. There we go, better. See, with all this flare, I really got to bring... You see how I'm bringing the darks in first? Normally, I bring the lights in first, but with all that lens flare, I really got to got to bring back the darks to give them that contrast that I want. Like, there we go. That's pretty nice. All right, good. Now we're, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, finally got it where we want it. And that same uh, exposure. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. We can already see that's not a good shot. Let's get rid of that. No. No. Oh. Ah, there we go. Back to the good shots. Once the mask comes out, you know it's going to be a good shot. Oh, don't want to do that. Uh. This one looks like it has some weird things going on with the color, too. I wonder why. I'm, I'm down at a 25th of a second, so I guess I'm picking up kind of a weird mixture of, of light. Cause the, the studio has uh, these, like, daylight LEDs hanging in the ceiling that are just kind of crap. Like Home Depot lights. But they're better than the, the at least color-wise, than the, the other lights we had, which were very warm. Um, which just didn't match at all the windows. Okay. I'm only keeping this one because she has the mask on. Oh. Yep. Yeah. That's Trina showing how much stronger than me she is. Mmm. 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 Out of focus. Uh, no, no. No. Oh. Oh. Alright. Now we got a little moodiness going on here. This is where we stop and take a sip of the coffee. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh yeah, no, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, it's always good to to. I mean, un, blowing on the lens is actually an interesting way to kind of learn, like what your lens does when when uh, light hits in in an imperfect way. So, um, I definitely like it. Welcome to Thunderdome. <laughs> uh, Eh, I'm not sure about needing cliches. And boom, it's a gun show. Uh, get it with a clapboard. Uh, no. I don't know. To me, um... I'm going to sound insulting, so get ready. Everybody get ready. If you're a photographer, don't take a picture of yourself with your camera. That says nothing about you, except that you own a camera, right? It's the last thing that you should be using as a prop when you're a photographer. We know you're a photographer. It's like, who cares? Unless you're selling it or use something very unique, like you, those guys that like built that truck and turned it into a camera. I don't want to see you with your Sony or your Nikon or your Canon or whatever. Who cares? You know? I mean, behind the scenes shots where you're shooting, that's different. Portrait of you holding a camera? No. What is it about you? What what makes you unique? It's not your camera. Your camera is a piece of equipment. It's nothing. It's like standing in front of your fancy car. It's like that says more about you in a negative way than you think it than you think it does when you think it's positive. So no. And actors certainly do not need pictures of themselves holding any kind of acting type prop. That's absolutely not the case. Um, now, again, behind the scenes shots, 100% different. 100% different. Sorry. Boom. Done. Rant over. Moving on. Whew. By the way, if you go to my Facebook and you see pictures of me standing in my car, I didn't put those on there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we got that kind of hard light we were doing at the beginning with the Magnum, but with the... Um, with the with the with the kicker. Oh yeah, Daniel likes some hard light. I actually like that, John. That's good. Okay, here we're trying to figure it out. Oh yeah, shooting on the background. See, we got hands cut off. Bad. Interesting. No. Better. Even better, I think. Best. Okay, so yeah, we're working through, right? She's moving in the light. We're seeing how the light affects her. She's moving around. She's like, bonk, 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 bonk. This could be a gif. Oh, ah. sorry. All right, so I'm going to keep that just because I'm going to make a gif out of that. No, uh, I love the expression here. This is great. You know, I love this. This is cool as far as showing the shape of her body. But uh, she, I think she's going to fall over. So we'll say no to that. Wow. This is very, like, statuesque. The, the only issue I have with this is that now, again, she's facing away from the light. And it's it's just not the best, best shot for her. This is better. That's even better. Okay. Like, this is good. Oh, I lost it now. You know, hand on the hip can sometimes work. Uh, but it also can seem a little contrived for me. This, though, feels so natural, you know, whether it is or not. And this is great when the arms are down. See here, I'm not loving the way the dress is falling. Shoulder back is, eh, eh, no. Yeah, this is definitely the one. So, you know, we did that quick series, and this is it, right? There we go. We got the shot. And I don't think that takes anything. That's basically... Let me give it a little highlight. Uh, I might do that thing where I make it black and white again, but I'm looking at him squinting. And again, I think that it might not be contrasty enough, but let's see. Can I get two black and white shots in the same sh thing? Absolutely not. Terrible. Oh my God. Why did I even look at that? You knew that it wasn't going to be good. Yeah, you sat and let me do it anyways. Oh, oh, oh. Vintage. No. Sorry. Okay. It's good the way it is. Perfect. A little blacks. And we're good. So now we've gone through all these and they look good, right? And we got 
I think we started with 170 and we've got 82. That's actually not too, eh, now that I'm looking at this one, it's a little dark. That's not too, too many to give to somebody, you know, especially an experienced uh, uh, actor slash model slash subject. Um, that's better. So what I, what I would be willing to do at this point is just give them all to her. I really like that picture. <laughs> This is great. Wow. I definitely need to start working out. Serena is showing me up. Um, okay, so we have these 82 pitchers. I'm going to select all of them again. I'm going to hit four. That's going to move them up to four stars, right? And then I'm going to do my search bar, and I'm going to go oh, four stars or higher. So, again, it stays the same. All those 82 are still there. And now I can be a little bit like if I'm if I'm gonna be picky, now's the time to do it, right? Because I know I can always drop back to three stars and pull those back if I if in the end I'm like, oh my god, I threw them all away. So now if I really want to like I'm like, oh, this is too many. Maybe I don't want to give her so many. Uh, I'm gonna give her all these. I'm sure you know you're watching this. Don't worry. But let's say I wanted to narrow it down more. When I do it the second time, I try to do it in a way that it's almost subconscious. Like I don't spend a lot of time dwelling on each image. I just go to it and. I either like it or I don't. Like it or I don't. Like it or I don't. I just go right down the line. So we're just going to do that now. First, I will look here. Uh, Cinemagrass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lego camera. <laughs> Oh man, Lego camera would be amazing. Okay. Uh, all right, here we go. Four stars are better. I'm gonna come over here and put my hand on number three. And I'm gonna put my other hand on the down button. And we're gonna just go through them, right? So I like that one. I like that one. I like that one. Well, nope. Nope. See, in here, what will happen is, like, let's say I like that one, and I come to this one, and I like it better. Then I'm just going to go back and forth to decide what I like best. Yep. To be honest, I like them both. They have different expressions. But, you know, if you were trying to decide, that's a little more like, mm hmm this one's a little more flat. This is good, but I like that better. So, doom, boom, I like that better. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. That's better. That's all right. No, 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 no. No, nope. I'm much more picky now. Again, if it just doesn't blow me away. And sometimes I'll go past one and I'll be like, oh, I like that. And then I'll see this one and be like, oh, no, that's way better. I'll go back up. Boom. Boom. Great. Yes. Yes. I definitely like a certain vibe. It's funny, too, because as I get closer to the end, there'll be more good ones. There are more ones that I'll keep because clearly the deeper you get into the shoot, the more, uh, boom. that was a mistake because I definitely like that one. I don't know why my mouse is going way over there. I'm not sure where it's going. Yeah, yeah. No, no, boom. Literally just going through, spending almost no time just looking. And if it doesn't immediately grab me, getting rid of it. There's a lot of different expressions here that I like. See, if they're close, you can make a choice. See here, she's like, oh, and then there she's like, oh, 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 and then she smiles. Boom, get rid of that one. I always like a laugh, but I'll get rid of it for this purpose. Still up in the air about that one. I definitely like the eyebrow. See, in here, I see that's a better version to me of that one. So I'll get rid of that one. Come back down because I got that, got it here. All right, that's a better shot. Boom. That's good. Hmm. 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 Mm. 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 No. 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 Yes. No. Mm. Oh, yes, for sure. Yeah, I like that. I like that for me. This, I like the expression, but this is a better shot. So now, 
in a matter of, you know, whatever, how long that took, I've now got rid of almost 40 of the 80 pictures. I've narrowed it down to half. And, you know, and if you really want to be even tighter, you just make a fi make them five stars and do the exact same thing hitting four each time. And then in the end, you'll really know. Because if they don't just hit you in the face, then you're probably not going to use them anyways, right? So that's basically what I would do. But in this case, because uh, I know that Sharina is going to have use of many pictures, and I trust that she won't, you know, use terrible ones when I get room. I'm going to go back to three stars. I'm going to select everything that's three stars or greater. And I'm going to come over here and we're going to distribute them. So if you remember from before, because of course they disappear, so I need to do another episode where I just do that. Maybe I'll do it next week. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you how to build these. But basically I have this uh, export called Models Dropbox. And what it does is it makes a 2,000 pixel on the long edge image in sRGB, because that's how we want to deliver to the models. It, um, it doesn't do any additional adjustments, so you know, no sharpening. Ugh, nobody does that. Um, it's going to put it in this root folder, Models, which I've already set up. That's in my Dropbox, which is why it's called Models Dropbox. It's going to create a folder with the document name, which is, as I always name things, the date and what it was. And generally, the model's name is in here, but in this case, it's not because it was for an Adorama uh, live stream. But normally, it would be like Sharina, right? So then, I'll come here. You know, I don't care. I'll give her all the metadata. Watermark. Oh, oh, no, of course not. So I come back to here. I know I'm good to go. All these are selected. I'm going to hit process. And what's going to happen is, in four minutes, basically, we're going to get all these images are going to be uh, made in a size that I'm going to share with the model, and they're going to be uploaded to my Dropbox. Once they're uploaded, I can then just select that uh, folder. In fact, I'll show you. Let's hide capture one for a second. So if I come back here and I go to Dropbox... My computer's going to be all janky because I'm doing too much stuff at once. Models. We can see that there should be, in fact, a folder that was just made here. And you can see the image is appearing. And all I have to do is right-click on this and copy Dropbox link. And then I can form, format an email and send it to my subject. Okay, guys, hope you like that. Uh, again, if you're interested in watching these things live and getting involved in the conversation, uh, you can join me every Sunday at 3 p.m. on Twitch. So go ahead and do that. Um, if you haven't already, you can subscribe to this channel where you'll see more videos, you know, like this, of course, but about gear and philosophy and stuff like that. Uh, join the conversation, you know, go ahead and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.